we have uh, contributed uh, more than 50 million euros to make the Armenian judicial system work better. Most of this contribution went to the material side of the judiciary system. Let me recall that the European Union helped to uh, build or renovate several court buildings in Armenia. We contributed to the building of the uh, Armavir prison. We provided a lot of support, which is very tangible. However, after the revolution, a new chapter has been opened. We consider what happened in Armenia last April to be a window of opportunity for the Armenian people, for the Armenian institutions, to make uh, a qualitative step forward in building independent, fair and effective judiciary in the country. Uh, I'm sitting next to uh, Mr. Minister who uh, has worked very hard the past uh, weeks and months to make a good opening for this new chapter and to make this window of opportunity a reality in terms of concrete uh, achievements. But we understand Armenia is at the beginning of the road. We as the European Union, we are ready to continue our support. We have now allocated 4 million uh, package to help uh, the drafting and implementation of the strategy for judicial reform. And we are ready to increase our support. We discussed yesterday with uh, the Deputy Prime Minister, Mr. Meher Grigoyan, our readiness to consider additional efforts to help Armenia to uh, build independent, fair and uh, effective judiciary. Uh, the government made it a priority. Independence of judiciary is clearly on top of the tasks that the new government defined as priorities. The European Union in the past uh, has offered its uh, support in terms of experience and good practice. Some of you may remember the visit of the peer review group, which we believe was very useful. And I understand today we will have the opportunity to discuss, to discuss the uh, follow-up to the peer review report. The peer review identified several of the most salient elements which should be addressed when discussing the reform of judiciary in Armenia. Of course, it's, as observed by uh, the Armenian government, it all starts with independence. The Prime Minister personally said that uh, he pledged never to call a judge directly or indirectly. And of course, independence from the political executive is the cornerstone of everything. But there are more facets of independence than only the independence from the political executive, the executive branch. It is also the position of the judiciary vis-a-vis -vis the legislative branch of power. It is the way that uh, judges are selected and appointed. It is the functioning of the Judicial Council and related bodies and many other elements. But one of the important uh, things that in particular the European experience shows is the internal independence of judiciary. The feeling of judges that they can pass the judgments in a fully free spirit based on their knowledge and conscious. It has to do, of course, with such issues as the nature of disciplinary procedures and so on and so forth. But the internal independence of judges is also very important, as the recent experience of some EU member states shows. So independence of judiciary, the cornerstone. Another important area identified by 
the European Union peer review members is the necessity to continue the fight against corruption. And I think it's another top priority of the Armenian government. So here our views totally coincide. Uh, the judiciary should be totally freed from corruption and appropriate preventive measures should be introduced to eliminate the risks of corruption in the future. Human nature is weak sometimes. So it's not enough to look pa to the past and deal with corruption cases of the past, but also to think about preventive measures to eliminate corruption in future. The third important aspect, says, aspect as identified by the peer review is the efficiency of judiciary. Uh, this is, of course, a big story. And uh, from our previous discussions with uh, Mr. Minister and, and his team, we know that this is an issue which is very challenging for Armenia. Because efficiency depends very much on the number of judges, on the number of courts, on the very material side of the issue. You cannot have efficient judiciary if you suffer from the deficit of judges and the <coughs> uh, extremely heavy workload. We are ready to discuss the, this uh, aspect and to listen to the needs of the Armenian side and how the European Union can uh, help. But it is also the question of the e-judiciary. E-judiciary, introducing the elements of e-governance into the judiciary, which is uh, the visiting card of the European Union. If you remember, we provided almost all external support to introduce the elements of e-judiciary in Armenia, and we are very proud of it and we are ready to continue our effort, but it also serves the purpose of making judiciary more efficient, more effective, delivering uh, the results of uh, the work in time and uh, free of any suspicion. There are other elements that I don't want to go into detail, as uh, for instance the issue of the random appointment of cases, a very important thing, when you have a judge appointing himself to consider a case, plenty of questions always arise. So we as the European Union, we are big supporters of the concept of random appointment of, of cases, also in Armenia, and so on and so forth. I stop here not to uh, uh, turn it into a long presentation. I am very grateful to the minister, personally to him, a man with deep knowledge and hard-working ethics for his contribution, and we are looking forward to the, continu to the continuation of our, our discussions today. Thank you.